Hi everybody and welcome back to The Luco Show. Today's topic is going to be money, inflation and the orchestrated destruction of the middle classes. Um, we're going to cover three main points quite briefly today. Friedman 2020-21 roadmap and what can I do? What can you do in order to best protect yourself in this crazy, uncertain, um, insidious environment in which we're finding ourselves? So effectively, Friedman. Milton Friedman, Rose Friedman, uh, the two met each other, husband and wife, in their in their their first day of their first university course in the University of Chicago Economic School. They spent their life writing books on monetarist, a monetarist approach to economics. So effectively, there are two main schools of thought in economics. One is the Keynesian, the John Maynard Keynes school of thought, and then there is classical monetarist theory. Now, unfortunately, um, all over the world at the moment, in more than 95% of universities, it is the Keynesian approach which is taught and is shown to, for whatever reason, is the popular choice of the way in which economies tend to be run at the moment. And historic data, in fact, shows that monetarist theory is much, much, much more accurate and reliable in terms of how things actually pan out over time. So the main, the main thing here, the main point that I want to allude to and for you to understand is that all over the world for this last six months in particular, central banks and governments have been printing money, increasing the quantity of money, the money supply through quantitative easing uh, on, a, on, a, on a level never seen before on an unprecedented scale and the Keynesian crew believe that this is okay this is something which uh, we can effectively just do and it's fine you know it's almost like there didn't need to be an economy in the first place we can just keep printing money and you know there's no negative impact that's going to come of all this uh, the much lesser known but frankly factual approach to economics and reality is classical monetarist theory whereby there is, it's kind of, what is it, Newton's third law for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Uh, now, the unfortunate nature through monetarist theory, through reality, which we're going to see in the coming months and years, is that whenever the government print money and make money, we get the, the good benefits first in the short term, we get the upside. It's only 12 to 18 months down the line that we start to see that increase in the quantity of money catching up to, to prices leading to a hyperinflationary environment. So I'm just going to quickly read out a couple of key notes that have taken um, quotes from Milton Friedman in lectures that he was given in the 70s, 80s and 90s. I've done a real deep dive over the last few weeks into this just to pick up well, I've made loads of notes, but I'm just going to very briefly read out a couple of ones that are specifically relevant for today. Inflation is produced by printing press presses and no place else. It is a printing press phenomenon. If we get government to spend money, we pay for it, either through taxation, direct taxation, or indirectly through inflation. So, if you stick on the radio any day now... You're hearing politicians being like, we need money for this. We need money for that. The government needs to give money for this, you know. And it's as if this, the government just has this big barrel of money. No, th the only place that the government gets money, that it has its spending power, comes from taxes and comes from inflation. That's it. That's the only way in which the government has money to spend money. So what we don't have at the moment we don't have politicians saying, look, we can't spend all this money because there's going to be this, this knock-on effect that's going to be like exponentially worse. Um, we just have more and more people trying to win, trying to curry favour and get pats on the back short term by saying, yeah, we need money for this, yeah, we need money for that, yeah, elect me again. We need someone to kind of stand up and be like, no, let's be really rational about this and try and have a more... You know, have more forethought, a more medium to long term view of our current YOLO esque day to day actions. 
Um, nobody, here's another quote, nobody wants inflation, but everyone wants to benefit from inflation. Everybody wants to stop inflation at someone else's expense. When most people say that they want to stop inflation, what they really mean is they want the price of things that they buy to go down and the price of things that they sell to go up. But since what one person buys is what another person sells, it's a nice, it's a neat nice trick if you're able to make that work. Okay, we're going to move on to the, the meat now of um, Friedman's explanation through historical data as to the impact and the effect of the quantity of money. Just so you have an idea of where we are right now today um, in relation to all the money that's been printed over the last six months and where it's going to lead us because the landscape of our economy is going to change drastically and the landscape of our day-to-day -day lives is going to change drastically over the next one, two, three years and beyond. And if you're watching this video, I want you to be aware because there are things which you can do in order to protect yourself. Uh, knowledge is one thing. Uh, knowledge in itself, in itself does nothing. Knowledge needs to be backed up with action in order for you to actually avail of the knowledge um, and protect yourself effectively. So that's the point of this video. We have over, this is from Friedman again, we have over 200 years worth of data in the UK and we have over 100 years worth of data in the US to show that an increase in the quantity of money, first of all, takes five to six months for people to start spending. So when people started first receiving payments and things like that from government um you know towards the beginning of lockdown and whenever businesses started receiving similar kind of bailouts and things like this you know smaller scale local businesses smes people were kind of cautious they don't want to spend so it initially friedman was saying takes five to six months before people start to get comfortable enough with the situation thinking look the world's not falling over things seem to be okay let's start spending the money. So that's historically been the case and it, it appears to be the case now because you know that, you know, say April, May, June time, you know, people, any money that people were having, they were just sitting on it thinking, listen, let's not do anything too naive here. Let's prepare just in case. But Friedman has shown how consistently throughout history, an increase in money printing, an increase in the quantity of money, after five, five or six months, people start spending. Um, one of the main reasons I'm making this video, one of the main things that I want you to take from this is, look, we're heading towards where win winter, as you can see behind us, it's like just after 5pm and it's already starting to get dark. Um, we're heading towards Christmas, Christmas shopping, things like this. I really want to push to people to really start pulling in the belts, tightening the belts, because um, we're going to head towards a hyperinflationary environment and it feels like a normal scenario in the economy or in the world at the moment but it, it is not and we're in this like bubble phase we're in this strange calm before the storm but trust me the storm is coming so we need to be ready i don't want to be kind of too negative but i'm trying to be as accurate as i can with with what i've learned um so yes it takes five to six month, months for people to start spending money when they do that buoys the economy it gives this temporary uh, boost to to businesses and things like this businesses which which aren't already closed but on that we must realize the economy is dead in comparison to anything we've ever known it's dead unemployment is higher than it's ever been um money printing has gone off the scale in order to facilitate that manage that businesses are closing all over the place and the more and more they do these lockdowns the more businesses they're forcing to close and the more businesses are just being forced to close as a result of just not having the, the necessary demand to stay open. So the economy is destroyed, yet if you look at the stock markets all around the world, we are approaching kind of teetering on the brink of, well, teetering on the brink is the right term, but we're also teetering on the brink of hitting all-time highs, which is ludicrous. You know, how can the stock market be going to all-time highs whenever... The economy is being absolutely decimated. So five to six months for uh, people to start spending money. 
And then Friedman explained how it then takes a further 12 to 18 months. So two years from the, the start of the money printing for prices to ramp up and to have the, the full inflationary or the full effect on inflation from that money printing. So we have seen unparalleled, unprecedented money printing over this last six months. As a result, we're going to see an equally a proportionate, unprecedented hit to inflation um, over the next 12 to 18 months. Okay, that's all the, the, the Friedman notes that I'll, that I'll explain to you today. There are, there are so many different like trading analysis tools that you can use to see that professional money, um, like the big banks, the JP Morgans of the world, are unwinding and offloading their positions in the stock market at the moment and what's happening at the moment is again there are there are numerous uh, sources of information that you can see which show that hedge funds pension funds and retail money which is basically you and i the ordinary person are getting more and more and more involved in the stock market and while they're doing that the um the big banks of the world are offloading their positions and moving out. So they're getting ready in effect to crash the market. And I don't know, I, 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 it's an insidious game. I don't, I don't know if anyone or any organization specifically knows when this is gonna happen, but the, the best way I can understand it and perceive it is it's like musical chairs. And it's as if the big banks are circling around a couple of little chairs and then everyone else, you and I, uh, on, you know, unknowingly or kind of there's like eight people circling around one chair and once the music stops once the crash happens the banks are going to have those two seats and everyone else is going to be fighting to try and scramble for that last remaining seat in the same way if you look at the jenga tower example it's like do you know at the very end of a game of jenga you know it's about a crash you're not sure which straw is going to be the one to break the camel's back but it's going to be one of them it's also like the political side of all of this is so manipulated as well so it could in some way coincide with the u.s election it could be after that say if biden wins it could be something to do with you know if he is to suggest or to say that they're going to increase capital gains tax because they're pushing towards this um more globalist centralized socialist awful tyrannical way of governing you and I with a reduction in freedoms and all sorts of things that you do not want in life. We're going to see an utter capitulation of the stock market. Now, there are a number of ways this can this can happen. This can happen in a short period of time, really dramatically, or it can equally happen like through this like slow bleed over years. But initially you better believe the initial fall will be dramatic. Now this is why I'm saying orchestrated destruction of the middle classes, right? Yesterday, so 2020 slash 2021 roadmap, we might even go a slight few more years in 2022, 2023, but call it 2020, 2021 roadmap. We're going to have a market crash, right? To my best understanding of how the markets are all panning out at the moment, I, I regard there as, I believe there's going to be a pan sell off. I, not just the stock market's going to crash, but gold and silver, where people are rushing to for kind of the, the traditional hedge, they're becoming a speculative market. I believe they're all going to tank as well, equally cryptocurrency. So I think the cash, if you're able to just sit any money that you have, just sit on cash. Don't listen to people saying that, oh, but cash, you know, doesn't uh, do anything for you because of inflation. Yeah, that's true. That's been that's true over like a ten year period of time, but it's the safest thing to sit on if everything else is going to absolutely capitulate. Now, pensions and people don't appreciate this enough. They don't think about it enough. Like I'm into this sort of stuff, and I don't think about this enough. I yesterday was doing a bit of a deep dive into what exactly my workplace pension um, was comprised of, what what it is, you know, what different bonds. And equities make you know uh, are the makeup of it. So, effectively, what I found was, and like it doesn't affect me nearly as much as it may you or you know your parents or grandparents or something like that. But my workplace pension is made up sixty percent of equities, i.e., shares, and forty percent of bonds. 
So bonds are probably quite safe. Theoretically, they're the they're the risk free, government backed, um, similar to cash type safe haven assets. So if you're really heavy on the bond front in your your pension, you know that element of it should be okay. But sixty percent of my pension portfolio, so I imagine sixty percent of most people's pension portfolios are um, are made up of shares. So like. If and when there's a stock market crash, a major stock market crash over the next four months, say, that's going to immediately uh, destroy the value of everyone's pensions who have a pension which is you know com- you know made up mainly of shares. So look, I-, I have to say that this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. But what can you do? You can understand your pension. You can. Like and I would really encourage you to do it because, uh, these these institutions are, it's kind of like whenever you're phoning up a phone company to cancel your bill, they make it intentionally difficult. And you have to sit in the phone for ages. And I think that if you try and change your position, change your portfolio, with with a pension, it might take as much as six weeks. So if I'm saying that this market's going to crash in the next few months, six weeks is quite a quite a long time. So. What I would encourage you heavily to do is look at your pension, see what you can do with it. I know that legally in the UK, you're not allowed to, I don't think you're allowed to cash out your, your pension until you're like 55. And if, if even if you do after that, you know, there's a lot of tax that you would have to pay and things like that. So, you know, maybe t- cashing it out mightn't be the best idea, but it may be, you know, that's what I'm just saying. You do your own due diligence on this, but don't bury your head in the sand on this because it's incredibly important. It's a massive you know, thing which people are so dependent on. They spend their entire lives working to get their pension and they think, oh, I'm going to go into retirement and everything's fine and rosy. Unfortunately, in the sick, twisted world that we live, that's not the reality. The reality is that pensions are heavily, heavily knee-deep in the stock market. So it tanks, pensions tank. And the value of what you have to continue living um, for your remaining years will be substantially smaller and this is the worst thing, right? Because if I think about a typical 60-year-old, say, you know, soon to retire or slightly older, just retired pensioner, uh, they're, they're probably going to have some sort of exposure to some sort of stock market in, in terms of like having some shares, right? And then they're also heavily reliant on their workplace pension. So that sort of person, and this is why I say the orchestrated destruction of the middle classes if you have some sort of substantial amount of your money in stocks and shares and the market crashes you have a heavy reliance on your workplace pension and the stock market crashes which destroys your workplace pension right that leaves you in a real real hole but then don't forget that because of all the crazy money printing that we've seen over the last six months we're going to find ourselves in a situation then suddenly 12 months, 18 months later, where the costs of your goods and services start going through the roof. So you're going to have much, much less money because you've been butchered, not through your own fault, because of this disgusting financial system's fault. And then suddenly you find yourself in a situation where the things that you have to pay for goes through the roof. So what I have here is, and this roadmap is market crash, pension collapse, supply squeeze, hyperinflation. So one more thing that, that will lead to hyperinflation is a scenario where there's a supply squeeze. And what I mean by that is, so businesses are closing, they're being forced to close the world over. Now, whenever there are less businesses operating, there's less supply in terms of goods and services which we all want slash need. And whenever we get to a situation where there are much fewer products produce food even things like that that we need when there's more people when the, when this when the demand is there in terms of more people or everyone still wants this thing but the supply is limited it becomes a scarce resource and as a result of that that will force up the prices so if you're forcing up the prices in that front and in addition we've got this inflation happening because of the increase in the quantity of money over these last months you've got this tsunami effect where you know, inflation just goes into this uncharted territory where, where we in our lifetimes have never experienced it. You know, we've had crazy hyperinflation in Zimbabwe and things like this where, you know, you can see 
they're currently on the US dollar, but they used to be on um, like the Zimbabwean dollar where it was something you could get like a hundred trillion dollar note, which could maybe buy you, you know, a banana or something crazy like that. So this is the scenario that that historic precedent and data suggests that we are heading towards based on the ways in which the central banks and government are operating all around the world, regrettably. So, look, I know this is real negative, but it's just reality. You don't hear this in the news, right? So, like, I know that there's a lot of... Uh, times are tough in terms of the kind of clash between those who are right-leaning and those who are left-leaning on so many issues at the moment. Um, I think that tolerance is something that we're completely missing at the moment, the ability to listen, the ability to think here, maybe I'm wrong about this, maybe I can learn something from you, but um, my point is, yeah, I would encourage everyone, especially those who are kind of, they get all their information from mainstream media and the news, to, to start looking at it and realising that this sort of conversation is not being had on the news, not you know, by a long stretch. If anything, they're trying to calm things, make things, and not in, a, not in like a, you know, don't give them the benefit of the doubt. It's more insidious than that. Most of these organizations are owned by large, co large corporations who also own the biggest banks in the world. And this whole thing, that's why I say it's orchestrated in such a way so that effectively we just move into this like two-tier system where it's those who have everything and then everyone else. And everyone else just becomes this weird sort of, I, I, I don't know, I don't know the motives or whatever it is that they're, but it's not good. Whatever it is they're trying to move us towards, it's not good. And freedoms are important, you know, we've forgotten so quickly since World War II, whatever, like millions and millions of people died to try and ensure that we have freedom all over the world. And we're just throwing it away, throwing it away like spoiled like little entitled fools. And we're gonna we're gonna learn we're gonna learn the hard way but there are things that we can do understand your pension underspend and save what you can um so yeah christmas is coming up there will obviously be temptations to finally relax spend a bit enjoy look things are going to get increasingly crazy so i would encourage you to you know you just need to have loved ones and spend good quality time with each other to enjoy christmas if, Christmas is about, about baby Jesus being born. Say some prayers, you know, think about him. Um, remove debt obligations. Yeah, stop buying cars on debt, on credit. Stop doing it. Literally, you're, you, the chances are you're not going to be able to pay it off if it's a three to five year payment or whatever. Stop buying new homes on 90% mortgages. Now, there are, there are different ways in which I'm looking into how this is all going to affect the housing market. Ultimately, it's going to end up in like a crash. I, I, a part of me thinks that the housing market crash might actually not occur for another couple of years because they're just going to hit you at every turn with with challenges and obstacles and crash after crash after crash. But if it look if the housing market crash doesn't coincide with this market crash, you better believe it'll it'll come shortly after that. So when I'm saying remove that obligations, I'm thinking look, you need to have a real hard look and audit at your own life right now and start thinking look the other thing is we're going to move like if you think that this remote working thing is, is just a temporary thing it's not if you're in a position where you know you're living somewhere where it's you have a 90 plus percent mortgage it's a bit of a squeeze you know on a good day what do you think it's going to be like in two years whenever the cost of all your goods and services goes up or in five years whenever your fixed rate becomes a variable rate and suddenly potentially the rate's much higher, you know. I'd encourage you to go and watch a few videos from the Great Depression. You can see them on YouTube or whatever, and like, people just think that this isn't gonna happen again, this sort of thing isn't gonna happen again. It's already happened. It's playing out right now. And the worst is not, you know, we've not even, we've not even cracked the, the, the surface on what's going to unfold over these coming years. So, tough choices, tough decisions need to be made. But if you kind of consolidate what you have, if you're really kind of stoic, you forego short-term pleasures for long-term protection and security. You know, you'll be you'll be a, you'll be a much happier person for it.
much more secure person for it and you'll you'll know that you've been smart with your with whatever it is that you have so think about it careful with temptation to join euphoria so yeah like there are different like i'm constantly looking at investing in videos and economics and things like this i'm interested in these things on my phone so i've always had trading 212 pop up on ads and things like this on my phone i've started to notice them on the radio on television ads just everyday joe type things so there is this growing encouragement throughout media and things like this and ads and everything to get people to join the stock market but that's because the big boys are offloading all their positions and they need people to buy off them in order to unload them you can't just sell shares if you want to sell a share and you want it to be sold at that current price you need there to be a buyer so what do you do you encourage average jane and joe to do this to do that and then you leg it and crash the market and life's over for the ordinary person so be careful with your temptation to join euphoria i was actually going to end this video on a bonus of, of like a a real short-term play that i was going to recommend that people do in terms of buying shares but it goes against the principle so i'm just going to leave that uh just you know if you're already in these markets i would really encourage you to start laddering out look at legging it asap and just be really careful if you start hearing over the next few weeks a lot on the media or even friends making money on different things or whatever just chances are if you get in after hearing something like that it'll be it'll be game over for you so last point community um there's always going to be someone in a worse position than you um and people like we in scenarios like this in the past people have never got through just by like looking after number one it doesn't work and even if it did work you'd have no fulfillment and you'd have something eaten away at you internally because you're going to become increasingly aware over these coming months and years of how challenging and difficult things are for so many different people. So in any scenario where you can adopt that JFK mindset of ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your neighbor, your friend, your relative, even if you don't like them, love thy neighbor and all that jazz legitimately like. We need to be there for one another and we need to call out BS wherever and whenever we see it. We need to start taking more of an active role. I would encourage you to start taking more of an active role. If you hear something, some politician asking for, let's get loads more money printed for ABC or whatever, just be like, nah, -uh, it doesn't work and you're putting us in jeopardy, you know, or if you see our freedoms being removed or someone suggesting something that will in some way limit them, just start playing an active role as best you can even if it's just giving people good advice passing on other knowledge that you have sharing stuff with me and i'll regurgitate it as best i can um, and look i don't have all the answers far far from it i'm just kind of aware and you know have this interest in learning as much as i can about this sort of stuff and sharing it as much as i can so yeah um subscribe to the channel and share and prepare if you know if you, if you think that people can benefit from this please do share um i'll be doing much more frequent video updates um yeah soon enough i've actually just handed in my notice to work and i'm going to be doing things like this and podcasting and things like this on a full-time basis from the start of the new year uh, i have to work out quite a lengthy notice period before then but yeah It'll not just be covering economic updates. It'll be much more all-encompassing than that. But yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. So I appreciate it if you've watched this far. And yeah, God bless. Keep the faith.